So for those of you that have been following me since I ever started this whole review and adventure, you may remember that one of my earliest interviews was with a furry terrorist. I still can't believe I thought that was a good idea. But in all seriousness, it was with a guy named Voice, and it was for his uh, idea of a horror anthology themed around abandoned places. And now, three years later, it's finally released, and we can get to that long-awaited review. And before I say anything, I just wanted to say that, yes, I did help edit this anthology. But since I knew that I would uh, eventually be reviewing it, uh, I strictly limited my interactions to uh, uh, grammatical corrections. There may have been some instances here and there where I suggested uh, rewording things and reworking uh, some elements of the stories, of of some of the stories, um, but it was mostly inconsequential stuff. Just know that my bias towards this anthology will not be affected by these factors. But with that said, let's jump into the review. To be honest, I've never really been into horror. Uh, It wasn't a thing that really clicked with me. Uh, Now, I do know a lot about horror movies and games and so on, especially recent ones. And I think it's safe to say that there is a small handful out there that are decently well done, while uh, all the rest is garbage. Sturgeon's Law, if you will. And that's Abandoned Places in a Nutshell, I'm afraid. There are 16 stories in this anthology, and I can count on one hand the number of them that I enjoyed. The biggest problem with the majority of these stories is that they all pretty much follow the same overused, contrived horror formula. Their characters go to some place... Why? Because reasons and spoopy things start happening and then it ends. There's no real satisfying payoff with um with the ending to most of these stories. And they're easily forgettable because most of them felt so bland and copy pasted. Like I could seriously take a mad libs of these stories and just change out a few words here and there and it would mostly be the same stories over and over again. They all just sort of mesh together in a big pile of... (sighs) Another big issue for uh, more modern horror and a critique that definitely applies to this anthology is that if the characters had a shred of intelligence to them, the problems that they experience in these stories would never be a problem. Especially with the prevalence of cell phones, like... Characters conveniently forgetting they exist so they can't call for help. And making the story faster instead of drawing it out and... Hmm... Yeah. And there was one story in this anthology that had just so much potential. I was reading through it and I kept thinking to myself, if these damn flashbacks didn't keep happening, the suspense and the build-up in this story and, and the final twist reveal at the end would have been one of those... Holy shit moments, you know? But the flashbacks did happen, and for no real reason, too. They just, they were just there, and they detracted from the story. Which was a real shame, because I wanted to enjoy it. But these flashbacks ruined any and all suspense. There were some stories in this anthology that weren't so much horror as they were just purely unsettling. Who's to say by David Ramirez, uh is one of the stories I had read early in the editing stage, and was one that, for a few weeks after, would often make me think back on it. It's really the uh, the only story in this anthology that tackled uh, psychological horror and did it very well. The main character in this story is obviously a fucked up individual. Uh, (laughs) I want to say it probes the mind of uh, of the criminally insane, like murderous schizophrenics, those type of people. I want to say that, but then you get to the end and it's like inception ending levels of mindfuckery. Having read it again for this review, I still don't know what to make of it. And then there was um, Prospero by Patrick Roachfort. Pat is Patrick Ro- Why do you authors have such difficult names? Anyways, Prospero. Uh, Again, not so much horror, but just really creepy and vague with its descriptions. Uh, There's not really a whole lot I can say uh, because just the whole story went over my head. 
But from what I gathered, it was weird, and it had to involve some uh, David Cronenberg-inspired body horror, uh, which made it all the more creepy because you can barely pick up on it uh, with its vague descriptions. But I still liked it. It was um, it was still a decently enjoyable story. Oh, and uh, and Candrel had a story in this uh, anthology, Rainfall. <laughs> and it was shit. No, no, it's uh, no, it was um, naturally uh, in expectedly. It was nothing short of brilliant. High quality, entertaining, and original, too. Um, I felt that the characters' driving motivations were well justified, and uh, the goal that they set themselves to actually made sense. Like I said, uh, with uh, the most of the stories in this anthology, and with uh, stupid characters, with them, the story happened because the story needed it to happen for the story to exist. It's just the epitome of contrivances. Um... But with Rainfall, the characters' actions were out of necessity, and with that, it was a, a real breath of fresh air, so um, a good job on Kandrel for that. Um, but as much as I enjoyed Rainfall, its I don't think it's quite the best story in this anthology. Uh, one thing that I will give credit to Abandoned Places and Voice is that there is a variety of horror in this uh, in this collection, most of it being the typical situational horror, like running from an axe murderer or supernatural horror and ghosts and things like that. There was some psychological horror thrown in, and Voice's own story gets an honorable mention for relying on cosmic horror, uh, which is interesting because the setup for piping felt so much like the thing, and I'm sure it was inspired by the thing, but then you get to the end, and it's like there are things beyond our uh, world of perception that we don't even know of, nor can we think of thinking of, and uh, and that is terrifying. So yes, Piping uh, by Voice is, is another really great story. And not even talking about this anthology, there's just a whole wide variety of um, of horror out there. Like uh, cosmic Lovecraftian horror, body horror, ghost stories, monster horror, uh, classic gothic horror, and uh, with the rise of video games, uh, survival horror. But there was um, one story in this anthology that dared to try something different and unexpected. And because of that uniqueness, uh, when I originally read this story about three years ago, it has stuck with me this whole time. Uh, and it was just a real pleasure reading it again when this anthology came out. Uh, and and uh, and in that time it took to get published, and only having read this story once, it had such an emotional impact on me that I could vividly remember practically every detail in this story. When looking at the various types of uh, horror genres out there, I found that this particular story didn't really fit well with them. And and as far as I can tell, I couldn't really find any genre that this story can fit in. So this story that I'm talking about may very well be one of the first of its kind uh, that I've read, so far at least. And so the absolute best story in this anthology, and undoubtedly one of the best stories that I have ever read for being so easily memorable, unique, original, emotionally impactful, and for quite possibly being a pioneer for a new genre of horror, that honor goes to Empathy by Region. <laughs> Empathy uses a type of horror that I will now coin social horror. It's one thing to be out in the wilderness and you fall and you break your leg and help is hundreds if not thousands of miles away. Of course you're going to be scared for your life. But let's put you in New York City. Times Square. Thousands of people are walking around every day. Police are always close by. And you get hit by a car. Your legs are broken. <laughs> you know, human psychology is, is fascinating. Uh, there are many universal assumptions that we base our behavior on as a society. For instance, if you have uh, official-looking papers and uh, you walk with a confident posture and you look like you know what you're doing and where you're going, you could walk into practically anywhere. When we're out in public and we get injured, we assume that there will be a passing pedestrian that will 
help us and call for help. And if the ambulance arrives, we assume that the EMTs will jump immediately to our aid without uh, hesitation and take us to the nearest hospital. We assume that when we call our loved ones, they will be for us in our time of need. What empathy does is it explores a situation where these assumptions never occur, where a random passing person doesn't lend a helping hand, where public servicemen don't uphold their duty, where a family member does nothing to help one of their own. And the real kicker is... Who's to say that this situation isn't entirely fictional? That is what is truly horrifying. I don't think it's by chance that a voice put this as the first story in the anthology. I think it sets an extremely high bar and the quality of the preceding stories just plummets from there with the occasional peak uh, spread throughout. Empathy should have been saved for last, but that's just me. And Reachin, this is directly to you. Empathy is your absolute best writing to date. Do more like that. Now, I know I said that there are quite a few stories in this anthology that I don't think are quite very good. Um, however, considering the quality of the decent and the really good stories in this collection, I think Abandoned Places is worth reading. It took three years for this anthology to get published, and I know that Voice put in a lot of time, effort, dedication, love, and a ton of patience just waiting for this thing to come out. I know he had a lot of aspirations for this thing and, and that he wanted to put out something great. Um, how he feels about it now, well, I guess we'll find out in the upcoming follow-up interview. If uh, he wants anything to do with me after all that I've said now. I don't know, we'll see. But until next time, I'm Isaiah Jacobs, and this has been a furry view. That was the stupidest fucking thing I've ever said. Holy!